go for it. Just do it. The worst thing that could happen is that no one likes it and I just either continue to just publish for fun and nobody really cares or, you know, stop. So hello, welcome to a exciting we're going to do today. So this is the announcement video for my new game and the novella that I have been writing. <laughs> so um, I don't know who I am. My name is Bill Sindel. I write um, spicy romance, really romance in general, but spicy romance that's uh, sci-fi and fantasy it's science fantasy kind of mixture in there um and uh i also play games talk about stories uh in general games of stories and things like that but today we're not going to do any of that today we're going to talk about my not secret project but my hush hush sort of project because I was talking about it but I wasn't talking about really too much about what it was. So for the last few months, yeah, something like that, I have been writing what I have dubbed the couple times I didn't mention it. Uh and to the people who did know about it, Project Succubus and the Vampire. And this was an idea that I decided that I just, it suddenly came across to me and I had been thinking about maybe I need to just post something. I need to just finally publish something, just do something. Um, so uh, after I talked to a couple of people and things like that, I decided to just go with it. I write a novella that it's just something hot and dirty and maybe the plot is questionable if there is plot just just post something and I kind of already knew this but through this project I have definitely learned I really really like writing about the spice out of course so i greatly enjoyed the fact that this was going to be an erotica but then i realized that erotica yes can have its own range too um and i do plan to do videos about talking about erotica and erotic romance uh not that i'm an expert but to talk about it because i feel like it's very neglected here within the authorship space. But it's also again another topic. Um I realized that Dolores Medill I still want to be a traditionally published author's name. Later in the future after I'm traditionally published, if I want to publish um independently or in name, no self publishing under that name, I can do that later after I've been traditionally published. Um, but there is some traditional uh, erotic romances, but it's still a very, not taboo, but very veiled uh, part of the industry. When you look at um, like management wish list agents and things like that, there's not a lot that want to publish erotic fiction in general. Um, but there's a huge amount of erotic fiction and especially erotic romance out in the self help world. So I decided. Why not just make a separate pen name for just erotic? Um, it would just be 
erotic romance, and I won't pin myself down to an extra that I'm not. So unlike Dolores Mandel, where I write um, spicy romance within science fiction, science fantasy, and fantasy, um, but mainly science fiction with some magic at least that's the last couple things that I've been writing has really been. <laughs> um, this new pen name can just be erotic romances. And I could do fantasy, I could do paranormal, I could do science fiction, I could do science fantasy, I could do, um, you know, anything, mystery, whatever I wanted, as long as it was an erotic romance and that would just be my basic deadline, basic check mark. And I could just kind of just do whatever I wanted. And that was kind of an idea to just be able to do whatever I want in a pen name and kind of experiment. And also if I have something that could be turned into an erotic story, and I just want to have fun there. So um, I will also say that with um, the Desiree publishing and people getting really excited and finding joy in writing shorter things, really pushed me even further into just doing this. I had been contemplating for a while doing novella but I was conflicted on, you know, should I make a pen name and what should I do and so on and so forth. Um, that really helped push me to just take the plunge, just go for it, just do it. The worst thing that can happen is that no one likes it and I just either continue to just publish for fun and nobody really cares or, you know, stop. So, that is kind of what, um, how that worked. Now, I never did a video explaining how I got Dolores Vale as a pen name, because Dolores Vale is also a pen name. Um, being that I do have a dual with the hospital, I had a professional job, I didn't feel comfortable um, publishing under my given name. Also, I have, I have a unique name, given name, and uh, I really didn't want that type. So, especially because I'm doing so much more under Dolores than just publishing. Um, but, and if you want a more detailed video, I can talk in more detail about uh, the finding and creating the pen name Dolores Mill, but it was still, but it was pretty much very similar or exactly the same as I found this new pen name. So, both pen names are based off of my family tree. So, a long time ago, my dad got on this hype of wanting to make a family tree and learn more about the family and have that communication. Uh, and if anything, through that process, I realized, especially as a, a minority, but also as a family who comes from Mexico, it's really hard to find accurate information or information at all the further you go back so that is interesting but um so i decided i still wanted to have some kind of tie to each other and i decided to keep the same last name so Modell is still the same last name which is the last name of some great 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 grandmother and first name is Serapia. So my new pen name is Serapia Pio. Um, it is the name of a great 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 grandmother who was native. Uh, I'm not exactly sure which tribe uh, but was the reason her name is so unique is because it comes from the native tribe that she uh, was in. 
um, with a partner. And I felt like, again, because I had said it, that I was most likely going to write erotica or at least very spicy things before fully deciding erotica, it felt like Sonopia was a exotic name in a lot of erotic romance authors tend to choose very tantalizing names and that's kind of where I went with that. Because Sarafia almost was this pen name story instead of Dolores. Um, she was on my list of names for who I could choose. Um, and I decided not to because I was like, it's too complicated of a name. But for erotic romance, I think it works. So my new pen name for erotic romance of in Kind is Rafi Medill. And um, yeah, you can, I'll have links down below. Um, I have the link tree, the Geek Geek Mom tree. Um, but I have an Instagram that I'll be posting stuff on for the villa. I have a Twitter that, just like my Dolores Twitter, you know, is relatively empty and hard work on it. Um, <laughs> so um, I, I do have some of those. And um, links to like the villa and stuff would probably be in the link tree. Also, uh, I haven't fully ironed that out as of doing this <laughs> because it's still October. But yeah, so that's my pen name. There's only been a couple of people within the author two community who know who knew about this. Very few people knew about my pen name. Um, but yeah. So, um, also, newsletter, not that I put out a newsletter for last um, quarter, but newsletter people on Kofi had heard about my name also. So, I'm also keeping one Kofi. I'm not having two. Um, I'm probably going to edit my bio so that people know that that is also me if they're wanting to go there. But yes, and you might want to. So going back into the story that we announced my new pen name and where you can find me, which again, you'll probably just be Instagram because I like Instagram. I'm also not making another YouTube because no, I can barely handle this. <laughs> but um, so the I'll put the cover here. So the title of the villa I made is Hunger's Desire. Um, and if you were in any of my streams or you watched the Crazy Week video vlog that will be up hopefully before this one, um, you will know that really only one person has read this story so far, uh, or at least it's six months of content, and that is Bumble. Bumble also helped me nail down a title, so thank you very much to them. <laughs> and they also helped me with like myself. So they've been a great alpha reader, <laughs> a great friend um, to just kind of help me. But yeah, so what I was calling it before was Project Sucky the Sick Vampire because this story takes place with a vampire and a succubus. Uh, and I really didn't know too much past that. Um, but the actual title is Hunger's Desire. Now, I'm going to tell you what the summary is that I finalized today. The winter holidays are here, and Sebastian needs a host, even if it's just for the holidays. Also, having a host to feed from would be a pleasant change. Katia needs a new host that will last longer and be filling, not wanting to get close to losing control over her hunger. They find each other and find fulfillment like never before. Only once morning comes does the truth of the situation come forward. Though if it's just for the holidays, why not enjoy it fully? So that's the summary that I put. And it's kind of going to be a holiday Bella. Not that I'm going to finish it over the holidays, but a holiday Bella, but not traditional, meaning that they are 
turn on the beans. I'm taking the spin off of pagan Yule winter holiday. So not that I'm an expert or it's really accurate or anything like that, but I took the idea of how long Yule Fest lasts um, as the timeline for this story. So with a little bit of fudgy room at the edges. At edges? Edges. So we have our main female character, uh, who is our succubus, which is a succubus. Um, so incubuses are male sex demons. Succubuses are female sex demons. Just to clarify that, I saw a lot of villas that had succubus in the title, and it was about a male sex demon. I'm like, sweetheart, that's an incubus, but we're not going to get on that so much. So, um, so our main female protagonist, who is our succubus, her name is Katya. I don't know if I'm saying that correctly. I fully just not made it up, but picked a random name. Um, it has no real meaning. Um, but she also will go by the name Kat as well. And it's kind of that play on cat, pussy, pussy cat kind of thing. So, um, but she is a human and she can shape shift. So, um, and she does go by she, 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 her pronouns. And she is kind of, so because I wanted to work within the traditional framework of what a succubus is. So, succubus, so, so. Before I talk about sexuality, which was kind of an interesting thought while I started to write it and I narrowed it down for her specifically, for our male made it much easier. Um, but so how the sex demons were, or how I have chosen to claim them within my fiction and from mythology or folklore, whatever. Um, so succubuses, which again are female sex demons. They had uh, intercourse with male humans, and they collect um, semen. So, uh, depending on the story and the folklore, what they do with it is different. Why they collect it is for different reasons. And then an incubus does the same thing. Uh, in the sense of having intercourse with female humans and um, places semen within them from random human males. Um, so that's like vaguely how a lot of succubus and cubus folklore works um, with certain communities having slight changes on things. Uh, so within my story, the incubuses and the succubuses need um, the succubuses need human semen as food, as nutrition. That is what they live off of. Uh, very much like a vampire lives off blood. Uh, incubuses work the same way, but it's like, you know, it's like, um, I find this hard because not really a name for it. Discharge? No, not discharge. Like the, uh, the when you get wet, <laughs> they the male sex demons consume that. So not that incubuses and succubuses within my world can't be like fly or pan or anything like that. It's just that it's difficult because you need that opposite sex to actually consume the food. So Katya um, does like playing with female or femme um, people, uh, but she definitely focuses on food because uh, the main idea behind the story was what about a vampire I was so 
not necessarily out of control, but was so thirsty that he accidentally kills humans because he's so thirsty. And it's so difficult for him to be fully, uh, fully uh, fed. And then I also somehow combine that with a succubus and that same idea of like, what would happen if she can't be fully fed? Her hunger is so great that she also has literally had, you know, effed somebody so much that they die from having too much intercourse, you know, from having too many orgasms. So, um, we do with ink and all like this <laughs> but um so like what would happen that was kind of the, the starting birth of this idea uh so uh both of our vampires and succubus that's their their main problem is they have a huge hunger and thirst that is very difficult to control and has never fully been fully satisfied without having detrimental consequences. Um, so getting back to Kat, she has had times, especially when she's had a consistent host, a consistent partner, um, that she's been able to play around with girls, with not girls, with females um, or femme people and um enjoys it and can appreciate when a feminine person is attractive but again she's constantly hungry and that need to continue to eat really overpowers any other interests um so she does tend to be with um masked people who have physical masked things um as long as they can give her semen that is the minimum requirement for her to for you to be her host um so so all paranormal creatures in this world can shapeshift to a certain degree um so cat uh has a human form and a demon form so her few her human form is specifically designed to be erotically arousing and attractive. A perfect male human's fantasy so that she can get hosts much easier. Um, and her demon form, which is her true form, uh, I'll have a picture. I did find something that was kind of similar to what I imagined her being. She has horns and uh, wings. She has like dragon leather-ish wings, but her wings are small um, and not fully big enough. So she can't actually fly. She can kind of float if she tries really hard, but it's very uh, exerting of like it tires her out. It's, it, she doesn't have strength in her wings. Um, because she could never, they never grew enough to fly, so she doesn't really exercise them. Um, uh, but she doesn't have a tail. A lot of succubuses have tails. I just didn't like that idea, so she doesn't have a tail. Um, her skin is pink, like a dark pink, uh, not red, but not like a, like a cute pink either. And she has like average breasts in her demon form, but she is still curvy. Now, in her human form, she has golden honey with darker skin. She has extremely large breasts. She's very curvy. Um, and uh, her, her hips are very accentuated. So, she's not just normal like what we'd call attractive curve, but like even more. Again, that ideal like sexual fantasy for a male is what she designed her 
and grew into uh, our human side because you kind of have some power over how you present your fake form, but not fully because it kind of grows up with you at the same time. At least that's my brain. <laughs> um, what doesn't change for her is she has violet eyes, uh, black hair, and she is like, again, like a baseline curve body, slightly plussed or whatever you want to call it. Uh, she does have like ma- within like magical powers, she does have the ability to heal quickly. She can heal much better when she's just fed or ideally if she was fully nourished, which at the beginning of the story, she's never had that experience consciously. There has been an incident in the past, which we kind of touch on a little bit later in the story. Um, but so depending on how hungry she is, depends on how quickly she heals. Uh, uh, and it doesn't matter how she consumes her semen, um, as long as she consumes it. She can get a little buzz from like kissing a male person. Uh, and I think a buzz is like the correct word for that. It doesn't really do much for her. It's like taking like a bite or getting eating like a kiss. Like if you're like, you want something sweet and you're half eating like a fun size candy or something like that. Um, that kind of is what will happen for her. But besides that, she needs for sure semen and it doesn't matter how she consumes it orally, vaginally, or through her anus. As long as it's in her body and she's absorbing it, then she's being uh, nourished. And then she's a pet because I couldn't help myself. And she's a pet phoenix, and there's kind of a little mini story within how um, she kind of glosses over it. And I haven't decided if I'm going to go in detail, or maybe this will, that will be like a special one off thing. Um, but she has a pet phoenix. Phoenix name is Cole, and it, Cole is very protective of her and cares very greatly for her. So that's Cat. Now we have our male lead, who is our vampire. Uh, his name is Sebastian of Sab. He is a uh, Latino and um, he's been alive a lot longer than Cat has. So both of these paranormal creatures have been alive for many, many, many decades. Uh, specifically, Cat's been alive for many, many decades, has seen the rise and fall of many things within this America-ish because it does kind of take place in the future and it takes place kind of like in generally in this area like in the sense of like the southwest of America sort of um, I did I never clarify exactly but that's kind of my inspiration um, because we do reference that she's originally from the east coast and that's where her family's from and that's where they made their money and things like that um, so they've been alive for a very long time. Sebastian, or Sebastian, um, is much older than her. I would at least say, I would I'd actually want to say much older. He's at least like a century older than her, or like half a century. I haven't fully decided. And I feel like it doesn't really matter. They're both old. Um, but he's older than she is and has definitely seen more than she has. So there is still that like older, he's older, she's younger kind of dynamic, even though they're ancient paranormal creatures. Um, but Sebastian is head of his house, which is a very old house, though it is a very small house. Um. And there is talk about that in the story, so I won't spoil that and like what happens, why it's a small house. But it's a very old house, it's rich, there's wealth of money. Um he has silver eyes, but very few people have seen them 
because when he's hungry, his eyes are red. So he's always had this tinge of either very bright red to like slightly light-ish red eye color based off of how hungry he is, how he's been fed. Um, he's had multiple hosts in his lifetime, but because of his hunger, sometimes he's afraid to take a human host. Uh, so sometimes, for a lot of his life, I should say sometimes, a lot of his life, he has um, lived off of feeding off of uh, blood bags. Um, like you would, you know, like when you go to the Red Cross and you donate blood, like that. You know, very obvious trouble of a lot of vampires within like modern time where we feed off of blood bags. So there's, I have that. His hair is slightly long and cur um, with some curls. He does have darker skin, which if you saw some of my Instagram, some of my tweets, I was complaining a lot about trying to find colored vampires that were not just black. And that is why, because I was having a hard time finding pictures that looked like brown vampires. So, yeah. Um, he does have a scar on his face because um, he can never. If it's a very bad injury, he can't fully heal because he's never fully fed. So kind of the same situation that she's in is the situation that they're in. Their hunger and, again, and thirst is so strong that because of that, they have consequences. They aren't as strong or as powerful as other beings of their kind. When he is fully fed, or, or at least greatly fed, he does have super speed, uh, and he can go extremely fast when he's fully fed. Um, he does have night vision, and he's slightly blind during the day in the sense that he has more like almost human vision during the day, and then at night he has like super vision, including night vision. If he were to go outside, like shirtless or something during the day, his skin will start almost like burning like sunburn, but sunlight is not dangerous to vampires in my world. They can still go out. They just tend to always have jackets on or like the women tend to have lots of like robes or scarves or things like that to just have some level of protection over their skin. It can be a very like light cardigan um, like even the like slightly see-through ones, as long as their skin isn't directly exposed to the sun, they're fine. So sunlight can't kill a vampire in my world. Because the notion is a vampire, um, and he has a hose, there are many people who have to take a hose for different reasons. Ten, there always has to be some kind of like exchange. So with succubuses and incubuses, it's really easy because you get sexual satisfaction for them to get food. Um, because Dashins is very demanding that he needs blood, um, he has turned his exchange into not just money and um high rank like within society to be a host of someone so high and so rich but also sexual money too so at this point in his life um his hunger and feeding is almost fully tied to sexual stuff too um so there there is a, a tie to that for him now um you can be able to see slightly and reverse. Uh, Sebastian does have a spawn where they do not have that same problem where their hunger or food is tied to sexual satisfaction. They have a much more healthy relationship with their host, which isn't going to be hugely talked about, but it's going to be more of like passively talked about. So. But yes, um, so that's kind of the main um, 
topics that I kind of wanted to pull. There will be a safe word because being, again, that this is erotica, there's a lot of uh, sex and intercourse in the story, but also erotica is based off of, or erotic romance is based off of the romantic journey and the sexual journey of our characters. And I'm definitely going to explore lear- relearning about about sex and emotion because, again, our two main characters really have tied intercourse to something that's not necessarily pleasurable, something that's necessity, something that's life, that's um, a need and not necessarily something that's fully enjoyable and we get this right away um so i'm gonna kind of explore that like relearning what sex and force can be to someone who is already experienced someone who's already had intercourse how you can still change and evolve so there, there's going to be a lot of that, or at least that's my hope. But um, I haven't written those parts yet. Those are future parts <laughs> for the next part. Uh, but yeah, and it will take place over Yule Fest. So Yule is from the 21st to the 1st, uh, but we're going to start a little bit earlier because they need to meet before they go to all these events. And the reason they're going to these events is because Sebastian, who is a big time person who owns like a company and stuff, it's, and he's a high, his family is a high social status. Uh, he is expected to be at these events and usually his spawn goes, but he is giving them a break. Uh, because they also don't necessarily like to be around people that much. They love their job and family, but um, having to plaster plaster a smile on their face and uh, interact with other creatures and other people is not their speed. And Sebastian just really doesn't like going to events. He doesn't like being questioned. He doesn't like um, the requirement of being a host or some kind of partner to attend these events. So, um, and we're going to address some of that too. And there's, oh, there is kind of trauma. I will, I should probably put that. It's like, I'll probably put that when that page comes up, but trauma is slightly addressed, very vaguely and off page. It's very general. Um, but yeah, so that's kind of what all the events are going to be. So the first part is just them meeting, figuring out what's going to happen. And then the next parts will be going to all these events, interacting with other creatures. We're going to find, interact with other paranormal beings interact with this slightly futuristic world and yeah so that is my <laughs> announcement of my pen name uh Sarah Bill. you can check me out oh and also before I forget something super important because I being mentioned it on my Dolores Wheel Kofi I will have a tier um where you will be able to be a member for five dollars and uh, under that tier, you will get the chapters or episodes, whatever, four days before I post them on Bella. And if I post anything special or extra, they will only be there on the Kofi for members. Um, so if I do special vlogs for the rest of the story, those will probably only go on Bella. I may mention them in like my general box, but if I do a focus vlog, kind of like the crazy week uh blog that hopefully is posted before this after favela comes out those will only be posted for members of that tier um 
So yeah, so you can you can find the Vela on Kindle Vela, but you can also find it on Kofi under that members list. So who knows? Maybe I'll do like I said, like a special um, short little Drabble story thingy about how Cat met Cole, because uh, she does talk about it. But maybe I'll just do a whole story about it, um, or you know something else. I hear. Okay. Maybe I'll put something else, you know. Well, we'll see. I don't have playlists and my interests are not pretty like other people's. So, but if you're interested in that, let me know and maybe I'll post a link to my Pinterests and people can look at the mess of my Pinterest. So, uh, but only members will have access to it. So, yeah, that is it. So, there's my pen name. I'll put the um, cover for the villa up again. And, yeah, if you want to read it four days in advance, you can get it on uh, uh, Kofi first. But if not, it will be on Kindle Vela in the first day. So, of course, will be free. And then after that, you get coins from how the Kinovilla thing works. Um, but yeah, thank you so much for watching. I greatly appreciate it. And I hope if you read the story, you enjoy it. Again, be warned, this is very much erotica. This is very much like just satisfying the urge to write whatever kind of the hell I want to just have fun and do whatever. There is a lot just in this for the first six months of content there is a lot a lot a lot a lot of intercourse just bear warning i'm not promising it's gonna slow down in this fella but i'm not gonna overrun it i will promise that it won't be overrun this is not corn <laughs> this is erotica there is a difference so and there is a there, there is a plot I know I said at the beginning, I was like, oh, I don't know, but there, there is kind of a plot. So, yes, but again, this is very self indulgent. Um, yeah, I do have more plans for this pen name, and I'm actually will be filming another video talking about what I'm doing for Nano that I'll probably post actually somewhere in the middle of November, um, talking about a story idea that I have. That will also be published under this name. Um, so yeah, again, Sarah Madil is going to be very much a self-indulgent pen name where I'm just going to write whatever the hell I want as long as it's erotic romance. So be prepared for the chaos if you're following Sarah Madil's journey. But uh, yeah, if you want just regular slightly tame more spice or even i do write sweet romances too i have a sweet poem on dolores um uh instagram let me go look at that uh but yeah if you want something chiller slightly more tamed in the sense of spice um and sometimes sweet you can check out all the dolores medill content that i have on instagram i have some poems posted and um i have a poem for sale on Kofi, and then just, you know, the rest of these videos where I'm talking about less spicy things. Um, um, no, still spicy, less scorching hot. That's the best way to describe that. <laughs> All right. Thank you so much. And I hope you enjoyed the story. Bye.